because that's really where the disconnect is, is that it's sort of we have love versus we have Torah commands, as opposed to understanding that we have love that helps us understand how to express. I mean, we have commands that teach us how to express the love. Okay? So the mainstream of Christianity would like you to believe that it's verses or either or as opposed to the combination. One helps you to understand the other. If you love me, keep my commands. And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, being, etc., etc., and guard his commands. So we have verse after verse that's linking the understanding of what love is and how to express it with his instructions, which we call the commandments or the Torah. When we see people not guarding the Torah, are you judging them? Are you mocking them? Are you picking on them or are you crying for them? Just think about that. Let it convict you in whatever way it needs to. What is your response when you see people breaking the Torah? Oh, look at them, those people, blah, blah, blah. Or is it like tears thinking, if they only knew you, Father, and understood your law, they would not be doing the things they're doing that's only going to hurt them. Where would you be learning from these accounts that you read in Scripture if you never got to see what happens when you don't listen? If you only got to read the stories about the people who did listen, then you would have no idea what happens to you when you don't listen. You would think, well, doesn't seem to be a real problem. I mean, obviously the people who listen do pretty good. Doesn't say anything bad happens to those who don't listen. So I can, might as well just not listen or listen, whatever, it doesn't seem to matter. Yet, you seeing what happened to Adam and Chavo, how critical is that? You seeing what happened in Noah's day with the flood. You seeing what happened when Assyria came and took the northern kingdom away. When Babylon came and took Judah away. You see all of these things playing out. Abba's not going to keep pouring out blessing on you when you're not doing the things he wants you to do. Why would he reward you? That's really the key, by the way, is understanding the difference between we talk about things like salvation and we talk about reward. Torah observance is not about salvation. Torah observance is about reward. Eternal life is a reward. The kingdom is a reward. Living forever is a reward. Blessings poured out in abundance is a reward. Those things are earned. His love language is not um, gifts. It's not words of affirmation. It's not physical touch. It's not acts of service. It's not quality time. He wants submission and trust. That's his love language. Trust me and obey, and I'll be happy to give you everything you ever wanted. That's his love language. He doesn't want just words of affirmation. Oh, I love you so much. And then we do whatever we want and don't listen to him. So he doesn't want that. Oh, quality time. Okay, you can sit and pray to him all day long. If you're not doing what he says, he could care less. Gifts, what are you going to give him? Physical touch? Well, you can't touch him. Oh, he used acts of service? Maybe that's the only thing that you can do. But what does he need you to do? He really just wants obedience. Now you have another option for you in your future. You still have death, but you also now have life. Moses tells you this, I lay before you life and death. In what form? The choices of submission to the authority of Yahweh or going and doing whatever you want. That's what it really was. And it's called Torah observance, covenant, or do whatever you want. This is why Paul calls it the law of sin and death versus the law of life, the law of righteousness. The Torah leads to life. You doing whatever you want, law according to yourself, and authority unto yourself leads to sin and death. All of you think, well, I'm just going to have forever. Well, why would anybody give you that? Have you earned the trust that you could be trustworthy with forever? I mean, we're talking about forever. We're not talking about like for a month, a year, a hundred years. We're talking about forever. Why would you think you should be able to get that so cheaply? Why would he allow you to go through so much stuff? Because he's got to know that he knows that he knows that you could be trusted with forever. 
Oh, I get couples all the time where the wife wants to say, oh, but he doesn't ever listen to me. Well, no, maybe he isn't, and maybe he's just not giving it as much weight as you want. And then, of course, you may have a husband who doesn't have anybody that he's listening to. So then you you have an uncovered wife and an uncovered husband. Being uncovered is going to lead to all the bad things in your life, whether you're the woman or the man. Can we understand that scriptural? If you are not covered, you are walking outside of the design of the system. And so here he says, your righteousness is righteousness forever, and your Torah is truth. Now, those of you who know the sort of little loop that I like to do where I take John 14, where it says, I am the truth, right? The way, the truth, and the life, I am truth. Yeshua said, John 14, 6. And then I've linked it here to Psalm 119, verse 142, where he says, your Torah is truth. So he tells you that your Torah is truth. It also says in verse 160, the sum of your word or the entirety of your word is truth. And all your righteous right rulings are forever. He says it again, what he just said here in verse 142. Now you take that, Yeshua is the truth, the word, the Torah is the truth. And then you go to John 1, 14, it says that the word or the truth put on flesh. So there's your proof that Yeshua is the walking, talking, living Torah. Because Moses said, I lay before you life and death as a choice. But what if you don't understand the choice? Okay, because if it was that simple, here, I've got life over here and death over here. You're going to run over and grab life. Oh, but it's not a thing you can just grab. It's a series of decisions and choices and actions you're going to do over a period of time. Life is not something you just grab. Oh, I want life. Here it is. So that's what you think, making your altar call. I've just grabbed life. No. I've committed to a path that leads to life.